China is marking the 40th anniversary of the country's economic reforms and opening up to the rest of the world. President Xi Jinping has been delivering a keynote speech at a commemorative event. The revolution in the country's economic policies changed it from being a relatively successful country to being possibly now a true superpower that can rival the United States. Now, let's get some analysis on what has been happening in China over the four-decade period that we're talking about. Park Kim Beng, you're a political analyst. You know China very well indeed. Let's first talk about this incredible success that the country has had in bringing tens and tens of millions of people out of poverty. Uh, I think this is the number tens and tens of millions of population may be an underestimation because empirically hundreds of millions of people have been lifted, lifted out of poverty. So what China has done over the last 40 years has been very, very impressive, not less. Uh, but we have to be aware that ch because of the one-child policy that was only lifted a few years ago, and the population is still declining. So that China is facing a very serious aging problem in, over the next few years. In fact, 25% of Chinese population will begin to age by 2020. Yeah, absolutely. Many, many countries around the world have exactly the same problem. Uh, we're talking about the success in bringing people out of poverty. The Chinese middle class is huge now. I mean, you see Chinese tourists all over the world, whereas just simply 15 years ago, if you saw a Chinese tourist in a Western city, you'd be kind of surprised. Has the country done this by actually abandoning some of the um, more key elements of communist policy? Because while it calls itself a communist country, it has quite a few almost neoliberal policies in the way it interacts with the rest of the world. You're, you're absolutely right. In fact, China has gone beyond the capitalist model in so many ways. Uh, if one is in China, you'll, you'll see that they have resorted to a cashless or e-payment to execute most of their financial transaction. And this is way ahead of many Asian and or even Western countries. So China has that knack or ability to transcend what it has set its sight on. Now, how so long... in many oh, sense, ex China excuse me. Sorry, please carry on. Society. Sorry, just repeat that last bit again. In many sense, China is now a post-capitalist society because it, it's adopting many features that is being experimented and explored by advanced capitalist countries, but never quite to the extent it, at which China is doing it, such oh, as okay. the e-payment or the cashless system. Okay, that's really interesting because that does lead on, does it not, to uh, the question of how long it can continue to act in a way that well, we could almost say suppresses some members of society. The huge amount of censorship, especially now in the Internet age, the way it treats some minorities, especially the Uyghur Muslims. How long can it continue to have that post-capitalist system and deny people basic rights that they would expect in a more liberal kind of post-capitalist system? Well, over the last 20 years, the central leadership in Beijing has tried very hard to address the poverty issue in the western side of China, which is areas like Xinjiang, where you Uyghur Muslims used to be, the policy hasn't been all that successful, I think, because of a huge influx of Han uh, Chinese immigrants. And news have been coming out that 800,000 to almost 2 million Uyghur Muslims have been placed under serious detention. And that is a sign that all the economic development, the narrative that we are getting from China is not completely accurate. There are certain parts of China that are not enjoying the fruits and the benefits of prosperity. And in order to make them more compliant, they have resorted to re-educating them again, oddly enough. Okay. Park Kim Beng, really appreciate your time. Thanks very much.